Okay, we've done a lot of line practice. We practiced in our um, practice sheet, and then we worked to fill our paper with all different types of lines. Now, we're going to make some lines in a little bit of a different way. You're going to need to pick which eight different, one of the skinny paper strips that I gave you that you're going to use to add um, some hanging lines off the bottom of your paper before we tape it closed and turn it into a windsock that you could hang at your house. So you'll need the paper strips and you can pick out eight of them. There'll be a few extras and I want you to save those for our next project. I also have some glue sticks that I put into your bag or you might still have your glue bottle. I know a few friends ran out of glue. And then I stuck in your inside one of the pocket folders. I tried to stick them in there so they didn't get lost. Um, I stuck two pieces of glitter tape. It's kind of like a sticker tape. Um, I wanna make sure I could send some tape home to help close it. Um, you could obviously do it with glue. Um, it'll take a little bit of manipulation to help it dry. Um, but you can also use any other tape that you have at home. Uh, you might want an adult's help to help you peel these before you stick them. Sometimes they can be a little tricky, uh, but you just get on the edge and you should be able to peel them up. All right, I'm gonna switch my camera and let's get started. Okay, so we have practiced all different types of lines. Wavy lines, curly lines, spiral lines, zigzag lines. But lines aren't just something that we draw on a paper. Lines can also be found in all different types of art. Today we're going to use our construction paper to make kind of 3D lines that we can hang from the bottom. So remember, I want you to count out eight different strips. So I've got four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, I kind of picked them to match my rainbow there. Um, I, we're going to work on creating um, four different lines out of our things and then you'll repeat them a second time. Oh, I almost forgot. You are going to need your scissors for this as well. So if you need to pause real quick and grab your scissors, go ahead and do that. You'll need those handy as well. Okay, so I'm going to set four off to the side because I'll repeat those after we do our first four. So go ahead and pick one to get started. Um, so you can see from the side, it looks very much like a skinny little line or it looks like a thick line. What we're going to do is we're going to fold our paper to help make some different types of lines. The first one we're going to make, um, let's make a spiral line. So we're going to roll up our paper. After I roll up my paper, I'm going to kind of rub it in my hands a little bit. I don't want to totally fold it because I do want it to be a spiral, but by doing this, I'm kind of smushing it so that the spiral will stay once I peel it apart. So do you see the spiral in my paper? So that'll be one line that I'm going to make. And I'll set that off to the side. Okay, for the next one, let's make a zigzag line. And if I'm going too fast, remember just to pause the video as you make yours and then press play again when you're ready for the next line. Okay, so for the zigzag line, we're going to fold our paper back and forth. Each time you want to fold your paper, you wanna smush it really hard with your fingers. And then you're just gonna fold it back and forth and smush, fold and smush. It's gonna look like a little accordion. Do you see that zigzag starting to form? Okay, now I unfold it. Here's my zigzag line. All right, for the next one, we're gonna use our scissors. We talked about making thick lines by using the tip of a marker, or, or I'm sorry, using the side of a marker or a thin line with the tip. For this one, we're gonna cut 
we're going to make a couple cuts on this um, paper all the way up to about there. We don't want to go all the way to the top. We'll cut it off. We're going to cut just right along. We're going to turn this thick piece of paper into lots of skinny, thin lines. We're going to turn our thick line into some thin lines by doing some cuts. Now, remember, we are just going to glue this along the bottom. So if you accidentally cut all the way, that's okay. You'll just glue it in a couple different pieces instead of just one piece. But see, since I didn't cut all the way to the top, this will be the part that I glue, and then my thin lines will all hang down from there. Okay, for my last one, I'm going to make a little bit of like kind of a wavy, curly line. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to roll it on the side. Okay, so I'm just rolling it. So as I roll it, I want to keep the front part rolled up and I want to keep rolling the back part in. Okay, I'm rolling it together so it'll look like a big straw kind of. I'm trying to and then I'm going to hold it there just for a second to try to make the paper stay in the shape that I want it. And now I've created kind of that spiral or that curly line. That one is a little trickier. If you're having a really hard time making it look like that, try to just make some other crazy line with your paper. It's okay. So now we have made four different kinds. We made a spiral by rolling it up and rolling it back and forth in our hands to make our spiral stick. We made a zigzag line by folding it back and forth and each time we made a fold, we pressed it between our fingers to get a good crease. We made, we turned a thick line into some thin lines by cutting some uh, lines but stopping before the end so we can glue them all together. But remember, if you cut it off, we're gluing it on anyway, it's not a big deal. And then the last one I did by rolling my paper up into one long line and just like I did with the spiral, kind of pressing it back and forth before I unraveled it a little bit so I have this kind of curl that goes through. Okay, now I'm gonna get busy on doing all of those a second time with my other four pieces of paper, and then I'll meet you back here and we'll be ready to attach them to our line paper. Okay, I'm back because I rolled all my spirals and curls I folded my zigzags and I cut one more thin strip. I need to set these off to the side. We're going to glue these on the bottom, but on the inside so they don't cover up our beautiful line work. Where the holes are is the top. I stuck a piece of yarn in your art supply bags where you can work with an adult once you're all finished to tie a knot um, at the top and then you can hang it up. So you don't want to glue your paper strips where the holes are. You're going to do it on the other side and we're going to flip our paper over. Along the bottom is where we're going to glue each of our paper strips on. So I'm going to take my glue stick and I'm going to put some glue on the part I want to glue down. That way I don't end up putting too much of a mess on my paper by put, applying too much glue. Okay, and then I'm just going to glue it at the bottom, right? Just about an inch on my paper because I want a lot of it to hang down at the bottom. So I'm going to space these out and keep gluing them on. Putting the glue on the end of the paper that I'm going to glue down. I'm putting a little space between each one so that it's going to fill my paper up. Curly one is so crazy. Okay, spacing them out.
Okay, then twist my glue back down before I put the cap on. That way I don't accidentally break the top part of the glue off in the cap. Okay, I glued on all of my strips at the bottom. Now it's time to bring it all together. I'm probably gonna end up covering up a little bit of my line work, but not too much. So we're going to bring the ends together. And we're gonna use that tape to tape it closed. This is where it's good to have an extra helper, like an adult at your house. If we were in the art room or in your classroom making art, this is where Miss Tess would come around with those big helper hands to help you finish this part. So you can use your glue stick to glue it closed if you can't find the glitter tape or you don't have other tape at home. If you had other tape at home, that would probably be easier than trying to peel the sticker tape but I had to figure out what could I send home just in case you don't have tape around. Okay, I should not have just cut my finger, or my fingernails, not my fingers. I made that way harder than I was before. Okay, so I'm just gonna bring the ends together and I gave you two pieces of tape. So you're gonna put like one down here And one down here. Right, it just help to tape the ends close. If you have other tape, use other tape. If you need to, you can just put some glue all along the back and then just kind of press it down to help hold it. Okay, my crazy line windsock is done. I'm gonna switch my camera and show you what it looks like. Okay, ta-da! All right, I have all my beautiful line work and then all of these great lines that were made just by folding the paper. So I have lines that were made in two-dimensional. That's anytime we draw or paint. We also made three-dimensional lines. That's anything that we can, art that we can walk around and we can touch and has all different sides to it. So things like sculptures and wind socks to hang up at your house. So an adult can help you grab a the yarn and just tie a knot at the end um, and then find somewhere fun to hang it. It might be fun to hang this outside um, if it's not too windy and you have a place where it might not get wet on a porch. Or wouldn't this uh, be crazy sitting on the top of your Christmas tree if you celebrate Christmas? I bet you can think of somewhere really fun to hang this in your house. Um, if you didn't work with me, you do need to send me a picture of your finished work. There's a link to upload it to Art Sonia um, so that I can see, because I can't wait to see your awesome line wind sucks when you finish it. I hope you had fun. Next week, I'm really excited for our next project, and I can't wait to see you then. Have a great weekend.